Hello everybody, um, those of you new to this channel might not be familiar with the little arrangement that exists outside my flat. Uh, basically, this building site that you can see here outside of my window, they finished it about two weeks ago. Which was brilliant news for me because it got a lot quieter. But as you can see, they've, um, they've ripped it all up and started again. Not good. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you'll know that quite often I have to try and film them multiple times, uh, mostly through through faults of my own. And I did try and film this one away from the building site and the noise. Firstly in the snow, the other day. Uh, excuse the African backing music to sheep and snow, I just like it. Um, I'll make sure I use that next time I'm in Africa. Uh, anyway, got home, discovered my, my mic wasn't working properly for some reason. So yeah, I, I was fuming. I calmed down, went outside again the next day to try and film again, uh, but it was like, it was too windy. Not a problem. I moved somewhere else, tried again. I don't know what that buzzing noise is, and I don't know if it would have been all that distracting to you, but I, I couldn't have edited that. It would have driven me mad. So yeah, I've just conceded that I'll, I'll have to do this one here next to the building site. Now, if you've seen other videos of mine recently, you might have noticed that I've been doing videos here in the dark. I've been doing them at night when the builders aren't there, naturally, just because it's, it's quieter. But since it seems that they're gonna be there for quite a while longer, I thought I should try and do one in the day, see what you make of the noise, if you could let me know how much it's annoying you, and then um, if it turns out that it's not that much, then maybe I'll try and record a bit more in the day, because it's quite annoying trying to record at night when I've got other stuff to do, and or on Sundays when I want to just sit in my pajamas watching Netflix. So um, yeah, it would be good if you could let me know if I'm able to record in the day or not. Um, yeah, cheers. Right, so anyway, where was I? What's the point of this video? Instagram and lenses. So the other day, I was in a camera shop. <laughs> Shock. And I was doing my usual thing, just eavesdropping every single conversation I can. And there was a woman in there who was quite new to photography. I think three or four months ago, she'd bought herself her first serious camera, which was like a an entry level Canon DSLR. And I think it had come with a kit zoom, which I assume is like 18 to 55 millimeters. And um, she was basically in there asking the sales assistant for some advice on what lens she should buy next. She was really enjoying photography and she was in the research stage of trying to find out what would be the most useful lens for her to move to next. And uh, without asking her any questions, at all about her photography. Oh, test number one, this is a freight train. I'll talk over it, see how annoying it is. So yeah, without this guy asking any questions about her photography, he just sort of said, yeah, you need a telephoto lens. And I just thought that was rubbish advice, like really rubbish advice. He just assumed that she wanted to increase her focal range. You know, had he asked her what photos she likes taking, she might have said, oh yeah, I mean, I like taking photos of insects. In which case he might have said, yes, you need a macro lens. Or she might have said, I like taking photos of the interior of churches. In which case he could have said, you want an ultra wide zoom or a fisheye lens. Or she might have said, I really like it when you can separate your subject from your background using a shallow depth of field. In which case he might have said, I'll get you a fast prime. Uh, but no, he didn't ask any of those questions. He just assumed that she wanted to increase her focal range as much as possible. And I just thought that was really shoddy advice. And I'm not gonna name the shop because I've had brilliant service in there before, but this guy was obviously on a, a bit of an off day. So yeah, I thought that was disappointing. It made me think maybe I should do a video about how Instagram and other photo sharing tools can help you in looking for uh, new lenses. Okay, so first up, you go to Instagram, you go to settings, and then you click on what lens should I buy next? There's, there's no such thing. That's also a terrible joke. No, no, no. You do go to settings, but then you go to posts that you've liked. And uh, if you're anything like me, what you'll see is a mixture of really nice looking photos, memes, and photos of food that your friends have taken in restaurants. Now, if you get rid of the memes, and the photos of food that your friends have taken in restaurants, you should just be left with photos that you've liked because they're really nice photos. And the aim here is that amongst those, you're gonna look for trends. And I'm not talking about trends in terms of color or subject matter. I'm talking about trends in terms of focal length. Now I know what you're thinking, if you're a beginner, um, James, how the hell do I know what focal length a photo was taken at? And uh, well, that's the point of this video. So, two ways I like to use, the first, I learned on the internet a few years ago and it's always helped me, but I, I don't know if it's the same for everyone, so 
bear with me. Right, here is a photo of some posters taken from across the road at an equivalent full frame focal length of 24 millimeters. Quite a wide, I mean a standard wide, but quite a wide shot. Here it is at 35 millimeters, here it is at 50 millimeters, here it is at 100 millimeters, and here it is at 350 millimeters. And the question is, how can you tell that that was taken with a long telephoto lens versus being stood right next to it with a wide angle lens? And the answer comes down to field of view, but if you're not particularly experienced at looking at photos in this way, it's still quite difficult to distinguish. So this is the little trick I use. Basically, if you look around the corner of the frame, Try and imagine that there are pairs of eyes there. I mean, in this example, that there is a pair of eyes, which is actually quite useful, because if you imagine that those eyes are looking at the camera that the photo was taken on, try and imagine what those eyes would see. Now, at 350 millimeters, I would bet that those eyes would see a camera that looks a lot like this. Basically, they'd see the full face of the lens. They'd have pretty much the same view as if they were in the middle of the picture, looking directly at the lens. Now, if I go across the road and try and replicate that photo with a 24mm lens, you get something a little bit different. So again, look at the eyes. Imagine those eyes looking at the camera, and imagine what those eyes would see from this camera. And I imagine it would be something like that. So they wouldn't see the full face of the lens. They'd just see sort of a, a side angle view of it. Get it? Here's another example. A, a, really gorgeous part of the uh, the Manchester Canal. And this time, imagine a pair of eyes in like the, the very bottom corner. And I'd imagine in this instance, at 24 mil, they would see something like, I don't know, like, like that, that maybe? Sort of looking, if you haven't guessed already, this is not an exact science. Now, same location, this time 350 millimeter equivalent focal length. And again, pair of eyes at the side of the frame, what would they see of the camera? And it would definitely be a front on view. The same view pretty much that they'd get from the middle of the frame. Now, if you're struggling a little bit with those examples, here's a photo that I took on a fisheye lens in a church in Prague a few years back. And if you imagine a pair of eyes in the corner of that frame, what they'd see of the camera there is, is well, something like that. I mean, a fisheye lens has pretty much a 180 degrees field of view. So, I mean, those eyes wouldn't see much of the lens, but the lens would see them. Now I appreciate that for some people that seems like a bit of a weird concept and it, it still might not help that much. In that case, what I'd suggest is you go to a couple of websites, maybe Flickr and 500px. And the reason I'd suggest going to those is that on those photos, they're kind of, they're more dedicated to photographers, those websites. And as a result, people are more interested in the settings that people use to take the photos that they're looking at. And therefore, people typically include that EXIF data. Now EXIF data, if you don't know, it's basically the settings that we used for that particular photo. So it'll take you through ISO, white balance, aperture, shutter speed, focal length. And what you can do on those websites is look at photos, guess the focal length, and then see how sort of right or wrong you were in the EXIF data. Very handy. Now I should say that if you use sites like Flickr or 500px a lot anyway, then you can just get rid of Instagram. The only reason I've talked about Instagram really is that more people use it, more people engage with it, and therefore they're more likely to have a list of photos that they really like, that they can try and spot trends within. But if you've already got a long list of favorites and likes on sites like Flickr, you don't have to worry about Instagram because they're the, they're the best places to go. Unfortunately, on Instagram, people very rarely include the settings that they used for the particular photos that you're looking at. If they do, gold mine. Look at those instead. Hopefully, some of that made sense. I mean, there are a couple more things to mention. Number one, focal lengths or, or focal length references change dependent on the sensor size you're using. So, I was talking about full frame equivalent in those lenses, that's because I was using a micro four thirds sensor, so I had to change the reference to the focal. It gets a bit complicated. This isn't about numbers, really. This is about working out whether a photo was taken on a, a wide angle lens, or, or a standard lens, or, or a telephoto lens. If you can sort of try and understand how a photo looks when it was taken on, on one of those categories of lenses, then hopefully you should be able to look at photos, photos you like, and work out if the kind of lens that that photo was taken on would be useful to have in your bag. From there, for example, if you know you want a telephoto lens, you can then go and look at what telephoto lenses are available for the camera that you have. But yeah, yeah, we don't have to worry about exact numbers. You're never gonna be in a position, I doubt, where even if you're looking at, you know, 500px and you see a photo, you're gonna be able to go, that was taken on a full frame camera at 46 millimeters. It just won't happen. And also another thing, in this video, I've really only talked about super wide angles and long telephotos. I should say that a good rule of thumb is that if you've got a kit zoom, then somewhere in the middle of that zoom range is probably the approximate field of view that you have as a person, just sort of walking around. And that can be a good benchmark for trying to work out if a photo was taken at like a standard focal length. If you've got a photo that looks like kind of how you see the world, chances are that was taken at a, a fairly standard focal length, like 35 mil or 50 mil on a full frame camera. 
But yeah, we're not talking about numbers. Anyway, as with many of my videos, I finish them and then think, I have no idea whether that's going to help anyone or, or makes any sense. Hopefully it does. Uh, thank you very much for bearing with me. If you can let me know how the, how the noise has been, particularly the train, that would be super helpful. Uh, yeah, until the next time, thanks for watching.